The world of video games was really changing in the late 90s. 2D was out, and 3D was in. Sure, there was garbage like the Jaguar and the real 3DO player, but the 3D era of game consoles truly began with the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation in 1994. They brought revolutionary changes to video game designs, but many were waiting to see what Nintendo would bring to the table. What would the Ultra 64 offer? How would Nintendo dominate the fifth generation of game consoles? As it turned out, Nintendo would dick around for a couple of years, renaming the Ultra Awesome Ultra 64 to the supremely dumbass Nintendo 64, finally launching in 1996. But was the wait worth it? Was the Nintendo 64 so much better than the competition that everyone worshipped at the altar of Mario? No, it wasn't. But let's explore why. To build the N64, Nintendo turned to Silicon Graphics or SGI, the best in the best in that era to design the core. SGI was the maker of the kinds of computers that fueled the CG revolution in movies of the era, like the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. So it seemed logical to turn to SGI for awesome 3D graphics. But here's the problem. SGI workstations cost something like $20,000. Even more if you want a good one. I don't care how awesome the next Mario game is, I'm not dropping 20 k on a game console. To make this thing actually affordable, Nintendo kinda had to scale down the hardware. And scale it down they did. The result was a machine with plenty of advanced graphical features like trilinear texture mapping, which the PlayStation 1 couldn't do. The N64 could smooth out textures, making them look less blocky than on the competition. However, due to budget cuts in silicon, only had 4K of texture memory. So while the N64 could produce cleaner textures, they lacked detail. And of course we have to talk about the cartridges. Nintendo decided to stick with the solid state cartridges instead of the optical media approach everyone else was taking. Gamers wanted FMVs, high quality sound, longer games and detailed graphics, all of which require plenty of storage, which the N64 just did not have in abundance. Developers had to work around these limitations, or cut down their games to fit. Then there was the cost. Cartridges were expensive and had a slow production time. While I couldn't find any concrete numbers, estimates suggest that they cost anywhere from $15 to $25 to manufacture, compared to the CDs for the PlayStation 1 which cost less than a dollar. This meant that the N64 had fewer, more expensive games, with developers jumping through hoops to accommodate its awkward architecture. That isn't to say that everything was bad with the N64. When games were built specifically for the hardware, they could be freaking awesome. Mario 64, GoldenEye, Banjo-Kazooie, and Rogue Squadron were all standout titles that the PlayStation 1 or Saturn would just not be able to run. Developers didn't always see limitations as limitations. The N64 couldn't do detailed textures, so they used GoArt shading on Mario and the environment, resulting in very clean-looking games with a distinct N64 appearance. In my opinion, the N64 was an influential game console with a few amazing games, several great games, a number of good games, and a bucket load of garbage games. Compare this to the PlayStation 1, which had a bunch of amazing games, a bunch of great games, a ton of good games, and a garbage truck full of garbage games. There was simply more to play on the PlayStation 1. You never saw anything like Final Fantasy VII on the N64. Not because the market wasn't there. N64 players would have traded Quest 64 in for Final Fantasy VII in a heartbeat. The problem was that what Square wanted to do just couldn't be achieved on the N64. Even Resident Evil 2, which saw a surprisingly good port to the N64, was significantly compromised and had to wait nearly two years after the PlayStation 1 release for the storage and technique to catch up with ambition. All of these factors resulted in Nintendo, the veteran with established connections and a strong market presence, getting its ass kicked by Sony, an electronics company with little experience. The PlayStation 1 outsold the N64 by more than 3 to 1. Was the N64 a bad console? No, it wasn't. 
but it was hampered by technological limitations and questionable design choices by Nintendo. But despite that, it still resulted in a number of influential games, and it still holds a strong nostalgic pull on the heartstrings of gamers old enough to remember it. What about you? What do you think? Was the N64 a misunderstood gem, or a, something of a misstep by Nintendo? Stick a comment below. We'll talk it out.